guys, welcome to Empower and my name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much as usual for watching my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to go over a medication called Dilantin. This medication is classified as an anti-epileptic. I really had a fun time making this video for you because one of the first jobs that I had, I was actually working on a step-down slash continuous EEG monitoring unit. And what we would do is we would have patients come in for sometimes days, weeks at a time. And what we would do is continuous EEG monitoring to try to find out the focal point of the seizure. And it was so interesting because based on the location of where the patient was having a seizure, certain medications or treatment would be effective or not effective. So if you ever get a chance to work on a floor like that, or if you work in a hospital and you have that capability, I would definitely take a tour of that unit if you could because it is very interesting. I also learned from working there that having a diagnosis of epilepsy can be very limiting. If you are known to have seizures, you're not able to operate certain machinery, even as simple as driving can be taken away from you. So it's really important that we do find the right medication for the right patient and help the patient go back to their normal life. So I really hope that this video gives you an understanding of how this medication works and a little bit about seizures in general. If you like this video and you'd like to see more like it, please do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up. All right guys, without any further ado, let's get started. Dilantin. Dilantin is a drug primarily used in the prevention and management or control of specific types of seizures or epilepsy, mainly with complex partial seizures and generalized tonic-clonic seizures, and also in the prevention and treatment of seizures that occur during or after a neurosurgery. This drug is categorized as an anticonvulsant or anti-epileptic. According to the Drug Categorization System, it is thought to act through the reduction or slowing of the brain impulses that may lead to seizures. One must note that this medication is not effective in treating all types of seizures, and a physician can assess if it is the right medication for a certain patient. In addition to its efficiency in limiting seizures, Dilantin frequently enhances the medical condition as well as the epileptic client's life. There is also substantial evidence that Dilantin is effective in the treatment of certain cardiac arrhythmias. This medication may be sold under various generic names and or in a variety of forms, including capsules, infotab suspensions, and vial or injectable forms. According to the federal law, the sale of Dilantin is prohibited without a prescription. Mechanism of Action Dilantin, with the generic name being phenytoin, induces its anticonvulsant activity by blocking sustained, high-frequency, repetitive firing of the action potentials in the brain. This is achieved by reduction in the amplitude of the sodium-dependent action potentials through the enhancement of steady, safe, inactivation. Sodium channels may exist in three key conformations, resting state, open state, and inactive phase. Dilantin binds preferentially to the inactive form of the sodium channel. Since it takes some time for the bound to dissociate from the active channel, a time-dependent channel block exists. Because the fraction of the inactive channel is enhanced by membrane depolarization and repetitive firing, the binding to the inactive state by dilantin sodium can lead to voltage-dependent, use-dependent, as well as time-dependent block of action potentials that are dependent on sodium. The main site of action is thought to be the motor cortex, where the spread of seizure activity is limited. Dilantin tends to stabilize the threshold against hyperexcitability that may result from excessive stimulation or any change in the environment that have the tendency to reduce sodium gradient of the membrane. This includes a fall in post-tetanic potentiation at synopsis that limits cortical seizure foci from detonating nearby cortical areas. Dilantin decreases the maximal activity of the brain stem center that leads to the tonic phase of the generalized tonic-clonic seizures. Contraindications. Contraindications for Dilantin. One should not take this medication in the following cases. Of course, an allergy to Dilantin or any of the ingredients of the drug. Allergic to other medications that fall in the category of 
hydantoins such as phosphenatoin, ethatoin, and phenytoin, consuming deliviridine, as there are chances for loss of virologic response and use of IV dilantin is contraindicated in clients that suffer bradycardia, SA block, second or third degree AV block, or Adam's stroke syndrome. Precautions. Precautions to be taken prior to your patient consuming dilantin. Encourage your patient to share important information with their physician, as this may affect how the client may use the medication. Some of the important factors to be considered include history or presence of liver disease, as some clients have reported liver problems with the use of dilantin, history or presence of diabetes, as medications that are used to reduce blood sugar of diabetic patients may develop drug reactions with dilantin, history or development of blood conditions such as porphyria, which is a genetic enzyme disorder that leads to symptoms that affect the skin or nervous system, history or development of depression, mood-related disorders, or suicidal thoughts or behavior as some of the patients under anti-seizure medications may develop suicidal thoughts or behavior. Pregnancy. Dilantin is in pregnancy category D as there is potential risk of developing fetal hydinotoin syndrome and fetal bleeding. However, optimal siege control is critical during pregnancy and therefore the medication may be continued if the benefits are higher than the risk. Breastfeeding. Since dilantin passes through the breast milk, that may affect the nutrition of the baby and consumption of large amounts of alcohol. Adverse reaction. Dilantin may produce unwanted reactions, though most of the side effects do not occur very often and can be managed. However, these side effects can lead to serious complications when not reported by the client or medical advice is not taken. One should check with the physician as soon as possible in case any any of these side effects occur, especially if it is severe. Pain in the bone or fractures, bleeding tender or enlarged gums, change in movement or coordination of muscles, a state of confusion, difficulty sleeping, dizziness or headaches, nausea, rash or a spinning sensation, bleeding symptoms, infection symptoms, liver problems such as yellowing of skin or dark urine, high blood sugar symptoms such as frequent urination and increased thirst, unusual movements of the eyes and vomiting. Patients should stop taking the medication and should immediately seek medical advice in case any of the following occur. Seizures, suicidal thoughts or behaviors, symptoms of a serious allergic reaction like fever, swelling in the glands, yellowing of the skin or eyes, or flu-like symptoms with rash or blistering, symptoms of serious skin-related reactions such as skin rashes, redness of the skin, blistering of the lips, eyes, or mouth, peeling of the skin, fevers, or joint pain. In case of overdose, the amounts of lethal dose in pediatric patients is not known yet. Lethal doses in adult cases assessed to be 2 to 5 grams. Initial symptoms of lethal C include nystagmus, ataxia, and dysarthria. Other symptoms can include tremors, hyperreflexia, lethargy, slurred speech, nausea, and vomiting. The client could become unresponsive, hypotensive and even death may occur as a result of respiratory and circulatory depression. The treatment for overdose is nonspecific as no antidote is known. The optimal functioning of the respiratory and circulatory system should be carefully monitored and relevant supportive measures should be used. Hemodialysis can be an option as dilantin or phenytoin is not completely attached to the plasma proteins. Total exchange transfusion has been employed in the treatment of cases of severe intoxication in pediatric clients. Drug interaction. Drug interactions may modify how medications work or elevate the risk of side effects. Phenytoin is an inducer of CYP3A4 and CYP2C19. Families of the P450 enzyme, which plays a critical role in the breakdown of various drugs by the liver. Over a thousand drugs have been found to interact with dilantin, around 90 of them which have major drug interactions. About 900 of them are moderate. Studies have been established that antacids administered 
concurrently with phenytoin modify the extent of absorption. Coumadin and tryptophane are thought to raise the level of serum phenytoin and increase the serum half-life of phenytoin by interfering with its metabolism. Apart from medication, phenytoin levels may fall when the suspension is administered with enteral nutrition. Enteral nutrition means feeding via tube, which may lead to inhibition of seizure control. Warnings and special considerations. Plasma concentration monitoring is a must since there is a very narrow therapeutic index of this medication. Intramuscular formations should be avoided unless required as they may lead to death of skin cells of the local tissue. Aged clients may show earlier toxicity symptoms. Medication should not be abandoned abruptly as it may result in an increased seizure frequency, including status epilepticus. Phenytoin may elevate the risk of suicidal thoughts or behaviors. Patients under this medication, therefore, should be observed for any changes in their mood development of depression or suicidal thoughts. Severe low blood pressure and abnormal heart rhythms may be seen with rapid infusion of IV phenytoin. IV infusions should not be greater than 50 mg per minute in adults or 1 to 3 mg per kilogram per minute in the pediatric patient. Monitoring of the heart should be done during and after IV infusions. Oral phenytoin should be used when possible in order to avoid these risks. This medication may lead to dizziness or drowsiness. One should not drive, use machinery, or engage in any activity that demands alertness. Also, vitamin D supplements may be required to prevent bone weakening, which is known as osteomalacia. The medication should be taken as prescribed by the physician. Parental dilantin should be used only in cases where oral administration of dilantin is not possible. In conclusion, dilantin is not a new drug. It was first made in 1908 and became useful for treating patients with seizures in 1936. Basically, it is an anti-epileptic or anticonvulsant drug that works by slowing down the impulses in the brain, consequently causing many patients that have seizures to disappear. It is available as a generic medication and is usually not too expensive, costing most patients about $30 for a one month's supply. All right guys, I really hope this video helps you out a lot in your nursing journey. Please remember to subscribe and also, if you have a video request, you can post your video request below. Like I mentioned in other other videos we're taking all of our future videos exactly from the video request so if you haven't seen your video yet keep on posting it because the more I see it then the more likely I am to create a video on it but if you could try to be a bit more specific um, a lot of people say that they would like to see videos on maternal newborn or pediatrics or pharmacology and it's kind of difficult to create such a broad video so if you could be specific that would be helpful all right again if you don't mind if this video did help you or if any of my videos have helped you please give the video a thumbs up and I can always to see you in my next video. I love you so much. Bye.